All right, well, thank you all for coming today and for <laughs> taping this wonderful program. Um, this is Whitney Roa, an occupational therapist from the Neshoba Nursing Service and Hospice, and she's going to be talking um, about some home si safety tips, um, some great equipment that she has, and anyone has any questions, feel, please feel free to ask them, and I'm sure she will answer them so well. Okay. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Enjoy. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Whitney Rohr, and um, like Valerie said, I'm an occupational therapist. Um, and the role of occupational therapy is to really look at somebody holistically um, and see um, how they can better either improve their function um, after an injury or an illness or any disease process that might be happening, um, or even just the process of aging. Um, so occupational therapists, the whole process is to really make sure that they're functioning as safely and as independently as possible. Um, so I have, have a background in home care therapy. Um, so I go a lot into people's homes, apartments, assisted living. Livings, um, and I help treat them at home and make sure that they're functioning as independently and as safely as possible. Um, so today's topic is home safety. Um, and one of the most important things when we talk about somebody being in the home um, is injuries that are related to maybe a fall in the home. It's usually one of the number one reasons why a therapist is involved in a home. Um, if they go in there's either been some sort of fall, there's been an injury, or there's a risk of a fall or a risk of an injury um, due to a disease process or a injury that's happened previously, or maybe somebody has had a surgery um, and now their balance or their strength is no longer um, as it was prior to that surgery. So a therapist would go into the home um, and we evaluate the home and make sure that it's safe and that somebody can, in, can function as independently as possible. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we do that, um, but usually it involves the first visit is a home safety evaluation and we would walk around with somebody in the home um, and look at the sh different structures um, to see um, you know, what could be a barrier um, to living at home or to living at home safely or any uh, possible um, items that are in the home that could cause somebody at risk for a fall. So um, the second cause of injury for people between the ages of 65 and 84 um, is a fall. Um, and they can be pretty detrimental to somebody's health. Um, so if you've ever had a fall, um, you know that it's pretty scary, um, especially if you've had a fall where you end up not being able to get up on your own. Maybe the EMS was called or um, something had happened to that effect. So it can be pretty scary and pretty frightening for people, and especially if they live alone without any support, um, it can be even harder to stay at home or to worry about you know, what's gonna happen at nighttime when I have to go to the bathroom. Um, so these are all the kinds of questions and concerns that come up, and that's what therapists are there for, to kind of evaluate and help to give some tips and tricks um, and to do some environmental modifications to hopefully prevent those falls from happening. Um, so one of the, Leading causes of fall um, is a disturbance in balance or gait. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we have falls. Sometimes our balance isn't as good and that can happen for a number of reasons. It can be a medical issue. It could be um, just the aging process. It could be weakness due to somebody not being as active as they once were before. Um, so balance and gait can really be one of the contributors to a fall. Um, so when we talk about balance, we're talking about you know, our ability to stand upright without swaying or moving. Um, our ability to walk is what we talk about with gait. Um, so when we move our feet forward to walk, um, we're referring to gait in that pattern. Um, so those can be disturbed for a number of reasons, like I said, for a medical reason, maybe it's a, um, a vertigo, if you've ever had vertigo or know of anybody who's had a vertigo. Um, it's an inner ear issue, so your balance can be impaired because of that. Um, the weakness can come because maybe you had a surgery or maybe you had a previous fall and you injured your foot or your ankle or your knee. Um, and so now you're kind of favoring that and so you're not act, you know, as active as possible. Um, so you're not walking the way that you usually would walk and so maybe you've had some weakness involved with that. So that can all contribute to a fall um, which impacts your balance and your gait. Um, so that's one of the reasons why falls occur. Another reason um, could be due to medications, okay? So depending on what kind of medication you're on or if you've just started a new medication, um, sometimes it's not always the appropriate dose or maybe it's too much or too little. Um, so we can have an issue with that. So if you're on a um, blood pressure medication, maybe it's a, too high of a dose and it can cause you um, to have some dizziness when you stand up. So when you change position, sometimes our blood pressure can drop. Um, for different reasons and you know your doctor would be able to talk to you about that a little bit more 
Um, but sometimes if you have different medications and maybe there is something that's new and you didn't know how it was going to react, that can impact your balance. Um, it can impact your ability to, um, to ambulate safely. Um, so we want to make sure that we're looking at that with our doctors as well. Um, and also some chronic conditions too. So if you, um, if you know of anyone who's ever had a stroke um, and maybe they've had some um, residual weakness from that stroke. So maybe their right side or their left side is affected. Um, and it could be a stroke that happened 20 years ago, but there's still um, some impacts from that because they're not able to use a particular side of their body. Um, that can be a chronic condition that can um, uh, impact somebody's ability to safely navigate their environment, which can cause fall and things like that. Um, also, um, Conditions like diabetes. If you have diabetes, or if you know somebody that has diabetes, sometimes they get what's called neuropathy, um, which is you know ha can happen in their feet. Um, they're unable to kind of really feel exactly where the foot is being placed on the ground. So if there's an uneven surface, or if there's um, a different um, texture on the floor, or they're wearing different shoes for whatever reason, they might not know exactly where their foot is being placed. Or if there's an item touching their foot, they may not be able to feel it. Um, and that can be an environmental reason why somebody might have a fall um, and impact their ability to, to safely live at home. Um, so those are a couple of the leading causes of why um, therapists are in the home and why we're evaluating home safety. Um, and those are some things that can also um, attribute to falls in the home. Um, so the, I have six tips here for um, general fall prevention. So the first one is always to make an appointment with your doctor and see what's going on. Um, sometimes people haven't been to the doctor in a year or two years or 20 years or whatever it might be. Um, so it's always good to check in with your doctor, especially if you know that there are some things that have changed with you and how you're feeling um, in terms of your balance or if your steadiness um, or your general um, endurance, um, things of that nature. So you want to make sure that you're getting a checkup. You're going to the doctor at least every year if you can. Um, making sure that you're, all your medications are at the right levels, that they're at the appropriate doses. Um, so that if you notice that, you, oh, well, my blood pressure medication was increased six months ago and now I'm just not feeling so great. Maybe you need to get that rechecked, see if it's the appropriate medication for you, making sure it's the right dose. Um, the second thing would, I would recommend for fall prevention is really to keep moving. Um, so try to, you know, if we don't use it, we lose it. That's the old adage, right? So if we don't keep moving, we can get weaker um, and our balance can become even more impaired if it already is. Um, so keeping up with any exercises that you do, whether it's walking up and down the hall, and especially in the snowy weather, we, it's hard to get outside in New England. So um, if you have a nice space in your home where there's a nice hallway, or even here at the um, Council on Aging, there's some nice hallways. So being able to walk up and down, um, practicing sitting up and down from a chair is really good for your legs um, to help keep your legs really nice and strong. So even if it's just simple like that while you're at home, sitting up and down from a chair, anything that you can do to keep moving. Um, the general recommendation is that we are um, getting up to walk about every hour. Um, so trying to get up and just walk for a good five minutes, maybe it's around your home or it's to the kitchen or to the bathroom and back, um, wherever it might be that you feel safe walking. Um, but keeping moving is really good for our health, really good for our muscles, really good for endurance. Um, so that's the other thing that we want to make sure that people are, stay as active as they possibly can, as safely as they can. Sensible shoes. So I see some nice good shoes here and some not good shoes. I don't know if you can see mine, but mine are terrible, terrible shoes. So I wear these on purpose when I do this presentation because these are not what to wear. So they have no back to, well, they have a little back, but it's not much. Um, and they're very, uh, they have very little traction, if any, on the bottom. They're basically like wearing ice skates. Um, so we don't want to wear these type of shoes because they're not supportive. Um, they're not safe. They can fall off. Um, so you really want to make sure that the kind of footwear that you have is really sturdy, that it fits your foot properly, it's not too tight in any areas or it's not too big in any areas, um, that you're able to get them on and get them off um, safely. Um, so maybe some people aren't able to do um, the laces anymore, so using something like you have there with a nice um, supportive back, a supportive bottom, but no laces so you can slip it on. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so something like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, so some good supportive shoes like that, especially in the winter time when we have our boots, making sure that we can get them on and get them off safely, but that they've got a nice grip on the bottom. So if we're walking in any kind of icy conditions or any snow, um, that we've got some really good supportive um, safe shoes on. Um, a lot of times we'll go into a home and we see that people um, either are wearing no shoes or really slippery socks or um, 
they're wearing house slippers with no back on them and those are not supportive they're not very safe so if you have a history of fall or if you have a fear of falling um, maybe getting some nice shoes that are you keep inside so they don't get dirty from being outside um, but that you can keep in the home that they're easy to get on easy to get off and keep you feeling nice and safe while you're in the home um, so removing home hazards so this could be a whole lecture in itself so there's lots of things in a home that can cause somebody to fall um, one of the things is um, scatter rugs. I know a lot of people like to have their scatter rugs and they've had them for years and they're you know, from their ancestors or whoever, they're antiques, so we like to have our scatter rugs around. Um, but one of those, the problem with those is that they have fringes sometimes on the edge of them. They can get caught up in shoes, they can get caught up in walkers, um, caught up in wheelchairs, so they can cause somebody to fall. So we want to make sure that any unnecessary scatter rug, if it's not secure to the ground, that's one of the first things that I look at when I go into a home, making, somebody, making sure that somebody can safely navigate it um, or try to remove it if they don't need it. Absolutely there. Um, one of the other things is stairs. Um, so a lot of people have a flight of stairs or a couple flight of stairs in the home to get upstairs to their bathroom or their bedroom or downstairs to the laundry. Um, so we want to make sure that we're looking at those kinds of areas. Is somebody able to safely navigate that? Um, not only safely able to get up, but able to get down. Um, are they able to do it because of their injury? Maybe you know they have a knee issue or a hip issue. Um, is that preventing them from doing it? Or is it an endurance thing? Going up and down stairs can be very taxing on somebody. So if somebody's having any breathing difficulties or um, problems with their heart, um, getting up a flight of stairs can be exhausting. So we want to make sure that we're looking at that. Um, if somebody is able to move down to the first floor and try to keep things on one level, that's obviously the best. Um, if somebody lives in an apartment, typically that's the, that's the setup. Everything's right on one level with no stairways or anything like that. So we want to make sure we're evaluating that. Um, one of the things that people will sometimes put into their home when they're having um, have a flight of stairs that they absolutely have to use are those stair lifts. Um, those are pretty popular now. Um, typically, they're just if you have a, just a straight flight of stairs, it's pretty easy to put them in. Um, so you can look into companies for that. So um, a stair lift is a really great option, especially if your bathroom or your bedroom is on the second floor. Um, any floorboards, or even if you have wall-to-wall -wall, wall carpeting, um, making sure that those are secured. A lot of times, especially in old New England homes, you walk in and they've got these old plank, beautiful wood floors, but there's little corners sticking up here and there. Um, so making sure that those are all nice and level, that they're taken care of, so that's not causing somebody to trip or fall. Um, looking at the carpeting too. So a lot of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting sometimes in homes, and depending on how old the carpeting is or how old the home is, sometimes you'll see it start to bunch up in areas. Um, so that can cause somebody to obviously trip or fall, or if you have a walker or a cane, um, it can really prevent somebody from being able to safely you know, navigate their home. So what they can do is they can stretch the carpet, um, make sure all those wrinkles and those bumps are nice and smoothed out so that somebody doesn't have a risk of falling. Um, so the fifth tip is lighting up your living space. Um, so another reason that people sometimes have falls um, is because of a visual issue. Um, as the body starts to age, our vision starts to be affected tremendously. Um, so we're unable to process um, light as efficiently as we were when we were younger. Um, so as we start to age, sometimes if you're in a really dark environment, it seems a lot darker to somebody who might be 30 or 40 years younger just because your ability to process um, light is not as efficient as it used to be. Um, so putting some proper lighting in your home, making sure you've got some nice bright lights either on your lamps or um, in your overhead lighting so that when you walk into a room, you're able to see um, the environment that you're in. Um, some people will put in some night lights. Um, so at nighttime, if they're going to the bathroom, they're able to safely nav navigate that. Um, so they can go um, from room to room with a night light that might be motion detected. So when you walk by it, um, it'll just light up for you. So you don't have to worry about turning on a light or finding a switch or turning on a lamp. Um, for lamps and for overhead lights, they make motion censored light bulbs. Um, so you don't even have to worry about turning it off or turning it on, which is great for energy efficiency too. Um, but if you have that switched on when you walk into a room and you walk right by that lamp or that overhead light, that lamp will switch on for you. So it's just something nice and easy to have that you don't have to worry about. Um, so those are some good tips to keeping your um, living space nice and bright. Uh, the sixth tip would be assistive devices. So we've got a whole bunch of assistive devices up here, um, but we're related into fall, to, um, fall prevention and balance. Um, a couple of the really important ones are over on that end of the, of the table here. So I'm going to make my way over here. Um, so we've got a couple different things here. 
Um, this is a walker, obviously. Um, so there's a bunch of different types of walkers. And one of the big questions that we get asked all the time is, what kind of walker is right for me? Um, so that would really depend on what kind of injury or what kind of um, illness or what kind of disease or what's going on with you in general um, would determine what kind of walker is appropriate for you. Um, if you're somebody who um, just got a new hip replacement, okay, so um, you've got a lot, you know, you've got a wound here, you've got a surgical wound, um, you've got some weakness, a lot of pain. One of these walkers is pretty much the, um, the standard for when somebody comes out of a, a hospital with a new hip or even a new knee. Um, so this is called a four, we, um, it's called a, a standard walker, um, and it's a front wheeled walker. So you've got two uh, wheels on the front here, and it's really helpful for somebody when they're taking step forward to offload the amount of pressure being put on their leg, and they're able to support themselves through their arms so that the amount of pain that they're experiencing in their leg um, is such that they're not going to give out or give in to the pain. So this is pretty standard for most people. Um, this one folds up, which is nice, so you can kind of put it away if you needed to. Um, the wheels in the front, and a lot of people don't know this, but this is a helpful tip, um, you can switch them. So if I took this, this one off and this one off and I reverse them, the wheels would be on the outside, which helps to give people a little bit more stability, not much, but a little bit. And so that's how they typically come, is with the wheels on this side and this side. But if you're going into a home, or if you're in a lot of these homes are, or you know, have some big furniture or some big couches or some big end tables, so the pathways are pretty narrow. If you switch those wheels, so if I took the leg off and I switched them again, the wheels would be on the inside like they are now, which is a pretty easy fix. It takes about three seconds to do, um, and now you've got about three more inches of room to get through your environment, which is really nice. So you're not getting caught up on a, you know, on a recliner or trying to have to navigate it this way. So this is a, pretty much a standard walker. Um, the other kind of walkers that you'll see out there are like the Cadillac walkers. So those are the ones with the hand brakes and they've got four wheels, they've got a seat on them, <laughs> and they've got a basket that you can put on underneath. Those are called rollators. So they have four wheels. Um, and one of those, those are really great for people who get out into the community a lot and they can go and go to Walmart, go to the grocery store, wherever it is that they're going, um, and they have a seat right there for them. So they need to take a break, they can relax, they can sit down. Um, they have brakes on them so that you can slow down the process. So if you're going down a ramp um, or like a slight incline, you can kind of slow the motion of the wheels, which is nice. Um, the problem with those can be for some people is that they have four wheels and they do tend to get away from people. So you want to keep a walker um, so that your hips are kind of in line with the back bars here and that you're walking along here. Um, with the rollators, they're pretty heavy. Um, and if you don't have enough strength or you don't have good balance or you can't keep up with the speed of it, a lot of times you'll start to see the walker go out here with somebody because it's getting away. Um, so that can be pretty difficult to obviously maintain your safety um, and prevent a fall. So you want to make sure that you're getting evaluated by a physical therapist to see what kind of device is right for you. Okay. Um, the other device that people commonly have is a cane. So we have two different types of canes. Do you mind if I borrow your cane? <laughs> Thank you. So this is called a single point cane um, because it has a single point of contact. So it's got a nice handle here and it's got a nice point at the bottom there. Um, and the height of it is adjustable so you can bring it up or you can bring it down. Um, so this is a good thing to have just for somebody who needs a little bit of a balance check here and there. So maybe they've got, you know, a couple tendency to go to the right or to the left. Um, so they need a cane just to kind of right their balance. And it's a good really way of keeping yourself feeling safe um, and upright with a single point cane. And this is called a quad cane, okay, or hemi cane. Now this is for somebody who um, has had maybe a stroke or has um, decreased use of one side of their body. Um, so this is a different type of cane. Same thing, it's adjustable in height, but it's got four points of contact. So you can imagine if I put this one down, it's going to stand upright. If I put this one down, it's going to fall. Um, so this is for somebody who needs a lot of support, maybe not a full walker, or they don't have the use of one arm for, to use a full walker, so they rely heavily on the four points of this cane. So I'm putting pretty much my whole weight on this cane right here, and it's supporting me. So if I don't have the use of one side of my body, and I still need some good steady, this would be an option for that. Again, you want to be sure that you're consulting a physical therapist um, before switching between any different types of um, device. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to take a little pause. Does anyone have any questions? I have a walker, but I only use it like when I'm going to the, take a shower and I put all the clothes on it. That's a, <laughs> that's a good way to carry, yeah. That's about all the only reason, um, yeah. only time I use it. Okay. 
Yep. Um, and that's what this basket here is for. That's a good segue. Um, so they have different types of things that you can put onto a regular walker. Um, so if I were to take this basket off, this is what the walker would look like. And that's how you mostly see people use a walker. Um, but like you said, people need to be able to carry things, but they want to do it safely. So they have two hands on a device, and then they're putting something in what's called a walker basket. Um, so it's a great way to be able to navigate your environment bring a water bottle, bring your coffee, bring a cell phone, keys, whatever you have. Um, it's a great way to be able to, to carry it around but still keeping two hands on a device. That's the only time I use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some people will choose to use it that way. They have, you know, um, a walker on here, I mean a basket on their walker. And some people will have what's called a walker tray. Um, so I've seen people use both. That's a lot of, that's a lot of equipment there for you. So, so, but you can get a, um, a nice tray to go on it. This one does not fit this particular walker, um, but typically it'll go right on and it locks right on so it's not tipping forward or backwards. Um, but this is great for somebody who, again, needs to have um, two hands on a device um, because their balance is impaired or they're not feeling as strong as they used to. Um, and they're able to carry, you know, a plate of food, a bowl of cereal, a cup of coffee, whatever they need um, to get around their environment, but do it as safely as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the picture. Uh, <laughs> yep, the heels, the high heels on that picture. Yeah. Last time I even a little bit of heel, I can't even remember when. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some, some pretty big stilettos there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so another... Um, area or activity that happens a lot in the home um, is what we call ADLs or activities of daily living. So something that you need to do every single day um, to be able to get through the day. So if you think about things that you do every single morning, so brushing your teeth, taking a shower, getting dressed, getting a meal prepared, um, all those types of things you'd have to do every single day to be able to sustain, to sustain life, right? You have to feed yourself, you gotta get dressed, you have to stay clean. Um, so a lot of those activities, depending on somebody's injury or illness, um, can be really, really difficult um, and can be very, very taxing on the body. So um, when we're talking about somebody getting it for dressing, for example, um, there's many, many different parts of getting dressed. Um, it's not just getting washed up and finding the clothes. It's putting the clothes on. It's being able to have your endurance last through that whole, maybe it's a half an hour or hour long process. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we can do with somebody to make sure that they're feeling um, safe while doing it, that they're able to get their energy to last the entire time. Um, so there's a couple different devices, there's a couple different tips and techniques that we can give people um, to be able to do it a little bit easier. So one of the biggest tips that I like to give somebody is um, when you're getting dressed, make sure that you're sitting down. Okay, so it's, when we sit down, when we stand, we're using a lot of our um, energy to just stay upright. So if you sit down, you're able to really take that load off your, your heart, um, take the load off your um, pulmonary system or your lungs. So maybe you're not breathing as heavily, you're not feeling as fatigued, um, and you're also a lot safer. So if I were to fall from here and I fell over like this, it's a lot easier than falling from here. I'm pretty tall, so it's a long way down. <laughs> okay, so the risk of injury if you were to have an event where you would fall from a chair is a lot easier on your body. Um, the second thing is that you're closer to your feet, so you're a little bit um, able to reach them a little bit easier um, rather than, again, standing from up here and trying to go down. Um, one of the biggest problems is that when somebody is upright and then they go down to having their head below their waist or below their heart, you can get very dizzy and that can cause somebody to fall as well. So you want to make sure the first thing that you have is a chair wherever you're getting dressed to make sure that you can sit down um, and be able to do it there. Um, there's also a bunch of different techniques, or I shouldn't say techniques, but I should say some little tools that you can use. Socks. Yep, for your socks or your stockings, yep. So these um, come in a lot of different sizes, a lot of different shapes, different materials. Um, this is a pretty standard one. The only thing I don't like about this one is that it's got this, um, like a loop here. Usually it's two separate pieces. I like to have two separate pieces because you can operate it a little bit differently than you can with the one standard piece. But what you would do is you'd put your sock on the bottom, you drop it down to the ground, hopefully you're sitting, um, and you're able to slide the foot into the sock and pull it on. So it's a really good ha like handy, handy uh, tool, especially for somebody who's had a hip replacement um, or a knee replacement and they're not able to get down to their foot. They can be a little bit frustrating though <laughs> to try to learn how to use them. So. 
Yeah. 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 Correct. So they're um, TED stockings can be really difficult because they're really um, TEDs are really really have a good elastic. They're for compression. They're called TED stockings, T E D, or compression stockings. Yeah. So they have a lot of elastic in them because they're made to compress your body to help circulate fluid and all that stuff in your body. So if you've got some swollen lower extremities, maybe your doctor's prescribed you some compression stockings. They can be really difficult to put on with this particular type because it's a hard kind of PVC. Um, but they make ones that are fabric that are a little bit more giving, um, that can be a little bit more helpful. Um, and the other really good thing about a TED stocking, or the best tip I can give, is really um, putting some foot powder on your foot so it helps it slide a little bit easier. Um, there's many different devices that are out there to try to help you get a TED stocking a little bit easier. And it's, <laughs> a lot of them don't work. <laughs> yeah, they're going all the way up. I know, but yeah. Those can be really difficult for people, especially if they don't have hand strength, how you're getting that on. I know it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so they, they're coming out with different ones now. So I just was looking on the internet not too long ago for somebody who was having a really hard time getting a TED stocking on. So they make zip up ones now and Velcro ones. Yeah. So it's a lot easier for somebody to put on. They're a little bit more pricey um, and they're not standard, but. It's better than the zipper because they don't have the strength to pull. The right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's a little, yeah, if you don't have any finger dexterity, yeah, all that. You lose that. Yeah, that's right. Yep, so um, they do make Velcro ones and they make zip ones. So there's all different options, but if you don't need to use them, that's a great thing. It's an hour. And you're exhausted afterwards because you're fighting with a stocking the whole time. I get it. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's true. This is true. Um, there's another device that we have here. These aren't swords, I promise. Um, so these are what's called long handled shoehorns. Okay, so most shoehorns you'll see are about this size, so the problem here is you're just slipping it on. But this is for somebody who may not have the hip um, flexibility or the ability to get down to their bottom of their shoe. Um, so somebody could typically, they could do it standing. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can reach it from a high distance. I have yeah? one of those, but the bottom part is much is wider. This part's wider? Yeah, okay. Once in a while I use it, but yeah. most of the time I don't. Yeah, this is, this is, um, so this These is. This is a kind of a medium long handled one. This one's a super long one. So this is really for somebody who, um, I don't even know where, how long their leg, how it'd have to be to get this one on. But this, this is a very long one. Um, but this one's also really good um, if somebody's got like an AFO or something, because you can kind of navigate it a little bit differently. It also has a good hook on the end. So if you needed to pull up a TED stocking, or if you need to pull up a sock or a pant leg, um, you could do it that way. So this one's just a little bit different. A couple different examples that we have. Um, but these kinds of, um, um, these kinds of tools are really helpful for somebody, again, where that dressing activity is really taxing or really difficult because they don't have the flexibility um, either in their arms or in their legs to be able to get those different parts. Um, one of the other things that you'll see a lot for um, ADL activities or those activities of daily living are a lot of the bathroom equipment. Um, so we talk a lot about the different things that are out there. And if you refer to this handout here with the pictures of it, a lot of different um, things that are here for you to kind of look at and see if you have them in your home. Um, and one of the standard things that we look at for um, somebody's home is the bathroom. So we always go into the bathroom to make sure that um, it's safe, that somebody can navigate it um, properly and safely as possible, um, and be able to access the different things that you're going to need in a bathroom. So um, one of the most obvious being the toilet. So we have a couple different things that can um, people can use for a toilet. So for somebody who's not able to get to the bathroom, maybe on time, um, at nighttime especially, so if they're um, obviously sleeping and their bathroom's in a different room or it's not near their bed, um, having what's called a bedside commode can be something that's really helpful for them. So this is what a bedside commode looks like. Um, so it just looks just like a little portable potty here. It's not too heavy. I'd say it's probably about 10 pounds the most. Um, and it's got a, you know, a regular toilet lid, um, but beneath it is a bucket. So this bucket has a couple different ways that you can use it. So there's a bucket to catch whatever you need to in there. Um, and the bucket also can be removed to be cleaned. Um, or you can take this part of it, and this is called a uh, toilet guard. So you can just leave that part in there and put the seat down. And then you're actually able to put this whole commode over a toilet. Um, so if somebody has a really low toilet at home, um, and if you're like me, a really low toilet is very hard to get down to. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so they have a couple of different things. So you can put the commode over the toilet and the legs down here, they adjust. Um, so they go up and down. So this would be very, this would be too short for me, obviously. Um, but somebody can raise it up nice and high so that you have now, you have arms so you can get down and off a toilet much easier, especially if you don't have any grab bars near it. Um, so this is one option. Another option would be um, like on that handout that you see, it's called a toilet riser. So it's about a six inch riser that comes off the toilet. Um, some of them have handles, some of them don't have handles. So some of them are oval cut, some of them are circular. So depending on the type of toilet you have, um, they make different types of options for you. So that's a good thing to look into as well, especially if you're having a difficult time getting off the toilet. Um, the second thing I look at when I go into a bathroom is the shower, okay? So what kind of shower do you have? Do you have a tub? Do you have a walk-in shower? It all depends on the type of home it is, um, the amount of space that you have. So we want to make sure that somebody's able to access that shower so they're able to get cleaned. Um, I'd say the most difficult type of um, shower would be a tub or a porcelain tub. So if you've got a nice big tub there and there's no walk-in or ability to get in or out, it can be really difficult. So if you have somebody who has a hip injury or a knee injury, and you can think about raising your foot a foot off the ground, some people can't do that. And not only that, but they can't lift their leg, balance on one leg, and then step into a wet, to a wet tub. That's really difficult for people, and a lot of people will have falls if they try to do that. Um, so looking at the tub to making sure that we're having proper safety equipment in there. Do they need a bench? Um, do they need a seat in there so they can sit down? Um, do they have grab bars? So those are the couple of really important things to look at when you're getting into a tub. And there's all different types of grab bars that you can get. So if you look down here at the bottom, um, this one, the picture on your left, um, are the standard grab bars. So those are the metal ones. They're pretty industrial looking. Um, but those are ones that people will often put in their homes. Or if you live in a, um, an apartment, sometimes they're already there for you. Um, so when I look at somebody's tub and I'm looking to see where they want to put their grab bars, um, what I'll generally say is have them do it and then what I uh, have them get into the tub the way that they would if I wasn't there. And whenever they put their hands, so a lot of times they'll steady themselves on the wall, wherever you're putting your hands to get into a shower or get into a tub is typically the area where we would put a grab bar. So those areas that you're touching to keep yourself balanced, that's where you would want a nice sturdy grab bar. Um, I get asked the question a lot about suction cup grab bars. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that's typically my answer is I wouldn't recommend them um, for somebody who really needs to put full support on a grab bar. So if you're really bearing down to get support, a suction cup probably is not the best for you because they do lose suction over time. You constantly have to check them, making sure that they're nice and clean, that they're still keeping their suction. Um, the other part about those is that if you have a tiled shower, so you've got subway tiled in there or some grout lines, the suction is not going to stay. So they're not very safe. Um, so I typically try to tell people not to get them. A better option if you only need one grab bar to steady yourself and you have a tub um, is this bottom part here. It's called a tub side grab bar and that can kind of be fixed to the side of the tub. It's movable. Um, and it works on a vice type system. So you put it on the side of the bar and then you tighten the vice so it becomes nice and steady for you. Um, and it's a little bit more reliable than I think than a suction cup grab bar. Um, the other places we look at for the tub and for the shower and the bathroom in general um, is the flooring. Okay, so if you've got some porcelain tile, it's very pretty and it's easy to clean, but it gets very slippery, <laughs> especially in a hot, wet, moist environment. So you want to make sure that you have some sort of, and this is the only place where I would say some sort of rug um, after you get out of the shower. So if you're navigating the bathroom, just doing your normal routine, I would say keep no rug in there, but you want a rug to be able to step on or some sort of mat to step on when you get out of the shower so that you have something that can collect the water um, so that you're not going to be slipping and sliding on a wet tile floor. So that would be the one um, time I would say you need a, a, some sort of rug in your bathroom. Um, also the bottom of the actual tub or the shower itself um, you want some sort of non-skid surface. So most tubs and most showers now will come with some sort of material that's anti-slip, um, but I even find that with soap and with things like that, it still gets really slippery. Um, so a really good technique to put is a, one of these mats that's here. So they make these textured suction cup mats that really stick to the ground, that give you some good feel and feel that you can, um, you know, you're not gonna slip and slide. The water goes through them so it's not pooling up at the bottom of your feet. Um, so you've got some nice textured surface that you can to grip on. Um, the other thing that they sell too are these um, 
yeah, the strips. They're like these sandpaper strips. Yeah. Um, so they're really great for a period of time, but over time they start to loosen um, and they might get some soap scum or something that causes them to erode a little bit. Um, so you just want to be careful that you're checking them, that they still have their texture to it and removing them if they're starting to kind of come up. So you can get those at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. You know where I find it difficult? If you travel abroad, most showers are tub showers. Yep. And the bottoms are slip and slide. So I always throw a towel in. Okay. Yeah. Even if I'm visiting someone who has that kind of shower tub, I throw a towel and I don't trust. Yeah. I don't know why Europeans aren't walking around with broken bones. <laughs> they're all on walkers, <laughs> every one of them. <laughs> when they're old, they don't take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> Not only are they high, but it's like a skating rink. Yeah. There are no bars. Yeah, and they're all those porcelain kind of and cloth foot tubs. Yeah. And they're yeah. lovely. Yep. You want to kill yourself. So, I mean, towels can be great to absorb water and to kind of make sure that it's nice and dry. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend keeping the towel in there while you're showering just because it can kind of bunch up and get wet. Yeah. Okay. So for some people, yeah, but to dry it down afterwards, I think that's a really, really good idea. Throw another one when you get out. Yeah. Because they don't believe in mats either. No. <laughs> no extra mats. <laughs> like in travel, these here, they have rooms like in a motel. Yeah. Handicap rooms. They do. Um, in Europe, you can't be handy. Oh, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. So I was there when I was okay. That cobblestones, there's no such thing as being handy. Well, I was in Scandinavia. Yeah. But I was wearing sneakers. Okay, so good, go good. Cobblestones. Okay. Years yeah. and years ago, when I could walk, but that's I a could really wore sneakers. And all these women with these heel things were all twisting their ankles. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, it's a really good point that you bring up, though. So if you are traveling, especially over the holiday season, um, yeah. Just, no, shoes with them. But asking ahead of time too for the different. If you're staying at a hotel, asking about the accommodations. Can I get a ground floor um, room? Can I get a room that's handicap accessible? So maybe they don't have the tub or anything like that, or they've got extra bars in the tub for you. Um, so the other kinds of things, especially if you have a tub at home, there's two different types of um, chairs that you can get. One is called a tub chair. So it's um, the one on your right here on the paper. Um, and it just looks like a regular chair. It's got a back to it and four legs. Um, I like ones that have arms on them, again, sort of like the commode so that you can push on and push off. Um, but that's a good option if, you can, if you're safely able to step up and over and into a tub. Um, the other option on the left-hand side of the page here is a tub bench. Um, so that is a elongated chair and two of the legs stay in the tub and two of them actually come on the outside of the tub. So it alleviates that process of having to step up and over and into a tub. Um, because two legs are on the outside of the tub, you now have a little seat. So you can actually sit down on that bench and then while you're seated, you're able to bring your legs up and over and slide into the, um, into the tub. So it's a much safer option for people. I don't, I don't, take, I don't, go, I don't go into bathtubs anymore. No, yeah. Yeah, for some people it's just not an option anymore and it's, that's totally okay too. But there are some people that really enjoy taking that nice hot shower and letting that water come over them. So that's a safe way to be able to get in and out of it. Yeah. I have a, I have a handicapped shower. Oh, good. So yeah. Like yeah, that's good. Um, the other thing too is a handheld shower head. So if, especially if you're using a seat while you're in the shower, um, it can be difficult to kind of adjust the nozzle or do all that. So if you have a handheld shower head, so it's a regular shower head that has a hose, um, you can sit down and have your shower and the water's right there for you. It keeps you nice and warm too because it's right there. Um, so that's a good option to have in a shower as well. Um, the other thing at the bottom, the bottom of that page on the left hand side um, is a long handled sponge. Um, I don't have one to show you, but essentially it's a handle that's long <laughs> and it's got a nice sponge at the end. <laughs> so it's really good for people, um, especially again, if you can't bend down or if you get dizzy when you bend down while you're in the shower, um, to be able to get your feet, to be able to get the backs of your legs. You can also use it to get your back, to get your bottom, whatever you need to get. Um, it's a really good tool to have, especially if you're having trouble getting the bottoms of your feet or your lower legs. They also make what's called a lotion paddle. So that's something that I found out that was a little bit newer. Um, so Bed Bath & Beyond has them and it's basically another long handle um, and then it's got kind of like a plastic paddle or a silicone paddle at the end um, that's got a little bit of a curve into it. Um, so what you can do is you can put the lotion on that and it kind of follows the curve of your leg so you can put lotion on your leg. 
which is a pretty good thing. Nice. Yeah. So all these different inventions, I wish I invented them, um, but they're out there. Um, and they're great for people, especially if you have dry skin or cracked skin or at risk for getting a skin tear or things like that. You want to keep your, your legs well lotioned. Um, so that's another activity or another um, device that's out there for those kinds of activities. So that's bathroom. Um, the last little part of it is kitchen safety. So another common area for falls, the number one is the bathroom, the number two would be the kitchen. Um, and both of them are hot, wet environments sometimes. So you're doing a lot of activity, there's things that get on the floor, water, oil, splatter, whatever it is. So we want to make sure that people are safe in the kitchen. Um, but also different activities while you're standing up doing activities in the kitchen like cutting or if you're having trouble doing um, activities like feeding. There's a couple different um, materials here that I brought for you. But going, hmm? I have a chair. You have a chair in your kitchen? Good, yeah. Well, it's, it's not as, you know, it's the living room, you know, the kitchen at the end there. Okay. So I just have a, a chair with, that's high. Yeah. You know, it's easy to sit on. Yeah. I'm doing anything, I just sit on the chair. Yep, well, you took the words right out of my mouth because one of the most important things to have in the kitchen is either a high stool or even just a low chair, whatever you have. Um, because if you're having any balance or any weakness in your legs or any fatigue or any um, endurance issues, having a chair in the kitchen can be very helpful. So if you're making a risotto, for example, which causes an hour of making <laughs> stirring rice at the stove, you want to be able to sit while you're doing it. Um, I don't make things like that. <laughs> but if there's other things or you know if you have an egg in the pan or you're making a sauce and you just want to sit there it's a great way to offload that energy for you so good thing to have um, and He's so very bad. <laughs> another <laughs> yeah <laughs> another good tool that's out there for somebody who's in the kitchen um, who has any difficulty <laughs> I'm not gonna pass this one around because it's kind of like a cleaver what's that it is like a lethal weapon. I don't pass this one around. <laughs> but that's why it comes with a guard, too. It is a chopper, yeah. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is, it hasn't changed in a long time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but for somebody who has, um, who doesn't, maybe only has the use of one hand, um, so when you're chopping an onion, you can't really support it. Um, so they have one handle kind of choppers. This one is very sharp, so it'll cut through meat, it'll cut through onions, it'll cut through celery. Um, but you can essentially do it with one hand without having to use the other hand if that one is not operational. But I have to be careful putting this back in because it's very sharp. Um, another thing that's really helpful for people, especially in the kitchen, um, for a number of different reasons, is this pad right here. And they make them in different sizes. This is one of the smaller ones. It's called a Dyson pad, so it's very sticky. Um, and it's got some really good grip to it. So if you think about somebody who has some hand weakness um, and they have to chop something on a, on a cutting board, sometimes cutting boards will slip right off the, of the, off the counter, um, especially if you're not able to hold it there. So you would essentially put the plate or the cutting board right on top of it, and as you're moving it, it doesn't slip. It sticks right to it. So I'm pushing pretty hard on this plate and it's not going anywhere. So this Dyson is really good to help kind of keep things steady so things don't slip um, and hopefully prevent an injury like a cut or something to the hand. These will be all got on Amazon. Um, so if you have somebody in your family or if you yourself go on Amazon or onto any of the internet um, and just kind of search um, Dyson, um, that's what you'll find and you can kind of get it at different places. Some pharmacies um, will have different types of equipment like this, um, but things like this Dyson here, um, that chopper, they probably won't have those kinds of things, so those are a little bit more difficult to get. Uh, Walmart, depending on which one you go to, has a ton of different um, available home safety types of equipment. They have a whole section, yeah. Some of them do, not all of them, but. <laughs> the one in, uh, I think it's in Lemonstar, it has a really good section. Um, and just different areas that will have different things. Sometimes pharmacies are really robust and they'll have a lot of stuff. The West Concord Pharmacy has a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so they'll have a lot of medical equipment. Um, yeah, I kind of you have to do your research, make some calls before you head out there. But yeah, they'll they'll definitely have some different things depending on which one you go to. Um, My cooking is not that loud. I don't want electric chopper. I don't choose yeah. anything. <laughs> Get it pre-chopped. It's much easier. <laughs> Um, for some people, they might have difficulty, um, maybe again, like that use of the one hand. Um, they might have trouble um, being able to feed themselves. So they make different types of equipment like plates. Um, this plate just looks like a normal plate, but if you look at it closely, it's got a little bit of a lip here. Um, and that lip serves a very specific purpose. So somebody who um, only has the use of one hand 
and they have peas, for example, those little suckers can get away from you really fast. Um, so you can kind of use the spoon right up to the edge of the plate, and that little lip will put the pea right on your spoon so you can eat it. So those are some really good things for people who have difficulty feeding themselves, um, some good options. And then the last thing would be these. Um, so these are um, utensils, obviously, uh, but they have a built-up handle. Okay, So somebody who has arthritis or has a weaker hand because of any sort of thing that's happened to their um, body over time, um, it's harder to grab something that's thin. Um, you can't get a good grip on it. So a lot of times people will say, oh, I keep dropping my spoon. Or when I'm out to dinner, it's really difficult for me to, to hold on to the utensil because they're so thin. So having a built-up handle, um, they come like this already pre-assembled, or you can have them where it's just the handle. So they can be pretty discreet for people. So when you go to a restaurant, you can just have your handles in your pocket and pull them out and put them on the fork and knife, um, which is really helpful for people. They also make them weighted. Um, so if you've ever seen anybody with a tremor, so somebody who might have a Parkinson's type of um, syndrome, um, having a weight to your hand can kind of stop that tremor from happening, which makes it easier to eat for them. Yeah, a couple different things. Um, oh, and one more thing for kitchen safety. So there's times, you know, where people are caring for somebody who might have um, some sort of safety awareness issue. Um, if somebody has a dementia process happening, um, maybe they have poor memory or um, they don't have really good safety awareness. So things like stoves that are in the home um, can be pretty dangerous, especially if somebody gets up at night, they're disoriented, they don't know where they are. Um, these are stove covers. Um, so this will actually cover the dial of the stove so they can't turn it on or turn it off. Um, because this part slips actually over the, um, over the dial and then there's a locking system on top so it kind of covers it just like that. So they're not able to access the stove, especially a gas stove or an electric stove if you can't turn it off. Um, it's a great cover for it. So it goes downward then? Well you can put it either way. So you can put it so it flips up this way or you can turn it around so that it comes up that way. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really good for somebody for safety, especially if you're nervous about them operating a stove. They do have them, yeah. They do have them for, yeah. Um, so they're a great thing, especially around the kitchen for somebody um, who may have some memory impairments. Okay. So that's a lot of, lot of things that we just covered. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any questions or any comments or concerns? Good. Good. Feel free to come up and look at anything. What's that? Good. Yep. Flashlights. Or people will carry them in their walker too. We were at um, another presentation not too long ago where a woman had a cane that looked just like yours, but she had a little flashlight fixed to it and a little button attached to it. So at nighttime, she just had to turn on that little button and it it worked. <laughs> so just different ideas that people have to kind of you know keep keep light with them or keep themselves safe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Little candles in the window so I can see. That's good. Um, yeah, any little night light. That's yeah. good to have. Actually, maybe they'll have walkers or canes with lights I included. Bet you in. do. I bet they, our daughters just received um, umbrellas that light up. Yeah, nice. Like, you know, well, I just turned them so I think I just turned them Yeah. The bed, the yeah. handle. And so the switch is going to be Yeah. You can see, yeah. Not that's that's a great idea. Idea. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Something turned back. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. That's great information. Thank you. And thank you for coming from the show Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lighting us with all these wonderful Good. Gifts. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.